Well, this really is a fascinating story that really begins in 1908 when the Basie Alhambra Theatre was uh, built. It was demolished in 1982 and adorning the top of the Barnsley Alhambra was a giant atlas, a statue of Atlas holding up the world and it was well known throughout the whole of Barnsley. Uh, unfortunately, when it was demolished, uh, it was lost among the rubble or so we thought. We've made our way 12 miles from Barnsley to Thorns in Wakefield because John Timmis, who's a local historian, has been doing some research on where the Barnsley Atlas might have got to. John, where does this story start for you? Well, me and Dave have done a lot of, a lot of searching for Atlas, and we knew we had come to Wakefield, uh, but nobody knew whereabouts it was. And I have quite a few historian books, uh, which I have, and last, only last week, one was looking at me from my bookcase, and I thought, I haven't read that book, so I picked it up, and it's, a, a, it's called The Vanishing Relics of Barnsley by J. J. Allett. And there he writes about Atlas. And not only does he write about it, but he mentions a name, Eric Wilkinson and Elisa, who live in Wakefield. I thought, right, because, you know, I'm into family history. I thought, I'm going to try to find that. And up came, went into the uh, family history pages, and up came Eric and Elisa Wilkinson and... Uh, and not only that, but their address <laughs> on the electoral list for 2002 and 2010. Right, so as soon as I got that, this is at 10 to 7 at night. <laughs> Do you think bingo? I thought, after, no, uh, th then I went into Google Earth and I, I looked at this plot and I thought, it's, it's a, a farm uh, because there were some trucks in the thing. And I, I thought, and the big lawns, as you can see, and I thought, that's got to be it. And there's no way, once they've dropped that 15 to Atlas in there, are they going to lift it back out of there? So at 10 to 7, I rings Dave. I said, I think I've cracked it. That's Dave Cherry. Dave Cherry, <laughs> yeah. I, I says, I think it's going to be there. And here we are. He couldn't wait. Here we are, we've come. He, he couldn't wait, and at 7 o'clock, 10 minutes later, he's running to my house, we can, we're over, we're over here by 8 o'clock. So he, get, he gets me up for it, and he said, I've, I've cracked it, this is like 7 o'clock, muddy night, and it's raining. I've cracked it, I said, crack what? He says, i found it, I said, from what? He says, Atlas, I said, what? Yeah. So, we, he had us coming here at 7 o'clock on, on a Monday night, and... Well, it was just like, a, said, what's this, a big posh house? <laughs> Nobody in with rings, bell. I said, there's no post box. He says, there's going to be, I said, there's going to be a post box. I said, I want to leave a note. Anyhow, Eric, come out, this is a fella whose, house, whose posh house it is, Eric and it, Wilkinson. And it's BBC Radio Sheffield. Here we are in Thorns in Wakefield, uh, on the trek, really, uh, to find the lost Atlas of Barnsley. And Eric Wilkinson, what a, how lovely to meet you. Nice how are meet, you? you know, I'm, I'm well. I'm doing well. And will you tell me the story about this wonderful Atlas? Now, sadly, it's just the head of Atlas, yes, isn't it? it is at the moment, unfortunately. Can we go into your have, garden? Yeah. It's in your garden, and it just happens to be in your garden wall, isn't it? Yes, it is. Tell me yeah. the story about how you discovered it. Well, I, I was coming back from Sheffield and I came through Barnsley and I saw Atlas on the site at Alhambra Theatre and I thought, wow, that's marvellous. What are they going to do with it? So I called on site, with me being at demolition as well, I called on site, I said, what are you doing with this figure? They said, we're going to smash it up. I said, well, don't do that. I said, I'll take it away if you don't want it. They said, what are you going to do with it? I said, I have no idea, but I said, I'll find something to do. So I brought it back here on wagon. I towed it to, into this area here. Yeah. And then I put, the, I put the, uh, the wall around him, you know, and I also put it over the top of him half, half the, the world with big stones. And it looked fantastic. So you kind of rebuilt Atlas in yes, a way I, in your I, I, garden. Yes, yeah, I just I, I, I said to my wife, I said I brought a garden gnome. <laughs> 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 and she said, she says, well, that's the biggest one I've ever seen. But it was a bit of fun. But uh, anyway, we just uh, we, we I decided to put the world back over him, and uh, we did it in stone. I plenty of stone with demolition jobs. And uh, it, it, it finished up a magnificent piece. Yeah. Anyway, as we, we sold this land at the back, 
for development and they weren't very careful and they kept uh, they kept damaging things and things kept falling onto him and, the, and they damaged the, the figure itself. Oh, crikey. So I finished up, I thought, well, the wife says, well, it can't be like this, it's not right, so we decided to take it down, put a staircase there, yeah. onto the level and where you've got a little was. pagoda, isn't yeah, it, and some steps up from your garden. Yeah, that we, we, this is where it was, this is a base, that's how wide it was. Right, wow. That there. And we uh, last saw it on a piece of fil film footage, lying really in a sad and derelict state on the, on the demolished site of the Alhambra, didn't yeah. we, in that piece of footage? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's how it was when he came in. How much in. did you pay for it, Eric, if you don't mind me asking? Nothing. <laughs> now that's a York, that's a Yorkshire price. How much? <laughs> <laughs> Take it away. We don't want it, you know. So I took it away and I put it in there. It cost me a lot of money to mess about with it, yeah. but it was all time and, and effort. And I and I, I, I like doing things like that, you know. Wow. So that's the main thing. And here but it is in your garden. Head in the wall. Uh, wow. And it's 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 about a foot and a half tall by a by a, a, a foot wide, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. I, it's uh, it's it's a uh, nice piece. Uh, but and what have you done to the eyes, Eric? Well, uh, this is the damage. We've put some. Uh, uh, the wife put some two marbles in to make it to, <laughs> to give it some uh, <laughs> some sight, as you might say. And Please. also, the nose were broken. And we've rebuilt the nose, but yeah. it, the man who made it must have been a real artist because he was a. Yeah. It was magnificent when he came and here. John, do we know who? Do do we know who actually made Atlas? Oh, yeah, we do know who actually made it. Well, yes, we do. It was Alfred Popperwell. Uh, he lived in Walton Street, Barnsley, and, and if you look at the 18th, uh, 18th, uh, 1939 census, you'll find that he was a stone machinist. And the funny thing about this, Eric will not know this, but Alfred was living with his wife, Emma, in this street, and they also got a, ch a child who was born in 1920 called Alfred, one called Brian, and one called Jenny. But the part that Eric doesn't know this, they also had a domestic ma maid working with her for the household, and her name was Mary Wilkinson, ah. and she was born in 1905. Isn't well, that strange? That well, is strange, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> so the the, the, wow. the daughter of the bloke that made this was called Mary Wilkinson. Well, she was the domestic maid. Oh, she's domestic maid. Ah, domestic maid. Mary wow. Wilkinson. And she was born in 1905. Wow. So that made uh, 34. Yeah, yeah. So wouldn't that wouldn't that be marvellous if if it turned out <laughs> to be a descendant of yours? Yeah, and it's funny because you know the figure itself was so big. It must have been a bit. Crazy to to actually think getting it on the wagon because it jiggled the wagon up. When I when they took it off the wagon, it was its last day, right of test, and I was going to scrap it. I brought it here. I tore, I, I dragged it off the wagon because I couldn't lift it. I had a big machine, and, and it twisted the body, jiggled the wagon up totally. <laughs> so. <laughs> So everything went, you know, just as it should. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, I dragged the piece, the piece over there with my machine, and I and I put it there, and then I built everything around him. Wow! Now, it it's fate, isn't it? Really, in in one way, because nobody in the right mind had to go get a seven or six or seven ton figure. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, I mean, if I'd have been passing that place uh, exactly. that, and just seen it there and I'm thinking, wow, what's that, that that's won't save him somehow in your head, yes. and I went and got it. And how would you describe it? He's a handsome chap, isn't he? He's bearded, yeah. he's got yeah. flowing, what I would have said, uh, uh, blonde hair, he's almost a kind of Greek god feature, isn't well, he? Well, it, it is, Atlas is, yeah. is a Greek god, isn't yeah. he? And, it, and he actually, I know he had the world above his head and held, holding it up, but in, in actual fact, he was... Spo he was um, uh, condemned for uh, he was a titan and he, he fought the, the gods and he lost mm. and so his punishment was to hold the, the sky up and uh, instead of you can't really put the sky anywhere can you so they build the world as, as a feature mm. and everybody thinks it's their punishment was to hold the world but it was to actually to hold the sky up wow yeah but it's, it, it it's was an very amazing very good story Eric, it is isn't, isn't it, it? Yeah. yeah i mean are you surprised years? about all of the, all the publicity and all the attention it's had yeah i thought i would have had it at the time because what what happened when uh, about a, about a year ago uh, not a year ago your year after i'd put him in the wall started using it I got a phone call from somebody and they said uh, hey Eric they've got a piece of paper in Barnsley they're wanting to know where Atlas is and I thought oh my god I've done something wrong 
first thing, you know, don't you? So I thought, oh, I'm in trouble here. I said, why, what's the matter? He says, oh, they're, they're all wanting to know where it is. Do you know what about it? I thought, oh, yeah. Yeah, I know about it. I said, I've got it. I said, oh, he said, I thought you would. He said, I thought you'd know. <laughs> I said, fair enough. Anyway, so the, 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 the paper came and did a feature on it. Uh, and uh, also, Alhambra Theatre, not Alhambra, the Alhambra building that's the, the, the centre, the, the shopping centre, yeah. They sent somebody from London to see him to see if they could put it back in the building somewhere, but they never found anywhere to put it because it no. was such a big lump. Um, and that was one thing. And then another, uh, about, about uh, maybe 15, 20 years after he was here, I got a couple from, uh, from Barnsley who come from America to see the, par- the, the parents and the family. And uh, they wanted to find Atlas because they'd... Uh, in, in, they used to meet underneath Atlas when they're courting yeah. and then they got married and they wondered what, what happened to it so they finished up coming here and, and taking photographs of, <laughs> and me taking photographs of them so, <laughs> so that, that's nice isn't yeah, it, it is. you'll so, have to start serving cream teas on your well, lawn well I'm thinking they're charging <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've met much do you know? but then again so you know they, they were a, that was a nice little story and they were really pleased and uh, we took photographs of them with, with them Side of him, yeah, and uh, and that was it. And then the next thing I know, they've got these two strangers looking in through me. <laughs> so, Dave Cherry and John Timmy. Yeah, yeah, what thought, do you think? They were a couple. Oh, I thought, they, they, they were a couple up to of nicking your lead off roof or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they, I, I thought I'll get out to see who these are. Then I went out, and then they told me they were looking for Atlas. So yeah, there it was. And I give them the story. I said, I've only got the head left, unfortunately. Yes, yeah. But the photographs, which I'll show Dave yes. uh, and, and yourself. Um, You'll see that the way it's gone and uh, how how big it was and how how nice it was. It was a yeah. really nice piece. Yeah, John, what a, what an amazing story that's come right back round, isn't it? How do you oh. feel about discovering? Well, this? I'm very pleased because, in actual fact, my mother and father met at this theatre, probably under that statue for all I know in 1925 because that's where they did eat. my father came from Stoke on Trent yeah. and not even married his mother over a Barnsley girl and they met at the Lambert Theatre yeah I can remember my mother telling me marvelous. what about marvelous. that yeah. absolutely marvellous yeah, and they all, all courting couples in them days used to yeah. meet under Atlas it was the easiest thing to find yeah. and uh, it was in the corner of the building wasn't it and it was looking down on the people marvellous so it was really well, nice Dave Cherry's made a film about this which is uh, going viral isn't it Dave Oh yeah, it's it's gone it's gone manic, uh, Eric. Yeah. Did you know we got eighteen hundred views in first hour? Did you? Yeah, yeah, oh, what's staggering! Oh, old pictures of Barnsley. It's on YouTube, isn't it? Uh, it's on YouTube with old pictures of Barnsley. It's a uh, social media. Barnsley mm. is still like, yeah. yeah but, and would you believe? I'm, I shouldn't say that. Yorkshire Post. Oh, listen, <laughs> listen. listen. On to me I, as well. I will listen. I went all over Barnsley <laughs> last Saturday, and John did. Trying to find a Yorkshire Post. <laughs> and this Noel, this wooden wall, why don't you try W.H. Smith? I says, Mrs., it's been shut for you, W.H. Smith. <laughs> Went all of it. Would you believe Barnley, which is only 18 miles from Leeds, no thing. So, yeah. <laughs> no Yorkshire Post. You must have sold it out. The kind of coffee. <laughs> Now, in Greek mythology, Atlas was the god that held up the sky. Did you know that? Of course. <laughs> well, in Yorkshire, he was used to adorn the old <laughs> Barnsley Alhambra Theatre. But after the theatre was demolished uh, in 1982, the Titan was thought lost forever. Until, that is, one intrepid historian decided to unearth his whereabouts. Shirley Henry takes up the story. The iconic Alhambra Theatre in Barnsley. One of its focal points was this statue of the Greek Titan Atlas. When the theatre was demolished in 1982, it was thought the Atlas was lost too. But hidden in a shed in Barnsley, a passionate local historian embarked on a voyage of discovery. Amazing, amazing. We all used to stand under this thing, you know, coming for the Saturday matinee when we were all kids. You know, and all the courting couples used to look up at it. Everybody were wondering in Barnsley, What a lovely, this big feature, this big nine-ton titan, Greek god. What's happened to it? Up until 1982, this is where Barnsley's Alhambra Theatre stood. It's now been replaced by the town's main shopping centre and many locals thought the Greek statue had been lost forever. 
well, that's until now. It's taken nearly 40 years, but last week, Dave tracked it down to a suburban garden in Wakefield. It had been saved from demolition by a businessman. A call on the side, I said, what are you going to do with the, with the figure? And they said, we're going to break it up. And I said, oh, blimey, don't do that. I said, it's magnificent. We built a piece for him, then I painted his face. We built his nose up, put him two eyes in, because I, want, I put marbles in for his eyes, and because I like him to be able to see. Sadly, Atlas was damaged in their garden. Its head is all that remains. It's hoped one day the sculpture will take pride of place back in Barnsley Town Centre. Shirley Henry, BBC Look North, Barnsley. He's a handsome chap, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, fine looking specimen <laughs> if ever there was one. <laughs> That's all right, isn't it? Dave Cherry joins us in the studio. Dave, of course, is a local historian, filmmaker and musician. Dave, what fantastic news this is. It's a lovely story, Toby, isn't it? Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, tell, tell us how we, first things first, how important was Atlas? Well, um, to the people of a, 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 Stood above the theatre, this great big Titan Greek god Atlas, um, holding the world up, and it was a great big six by six, six nine ton, I think it weighed. Yeah. It was on the left hand side of the building, and of course, all the courting couples have also going to the pictures on a Saturday afternoon to the matinee. This great thing looked down at us. Mm. Well, I've got an old cine film on it, uh, 1979, when it was uh, open running, then the theatre was demolished in 82. And we thought, me and Andy Kershaw thought it had been demolished. And my mate, John Timmis, you've just heard the lad on the interview, he tracked it down to this bloke in Wakefield. It's in his garden on this wall. I mean, that's just unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and obviously it's staying in his garden. Which is, I mean, you've got to be pleased for him, but it's such a shame he can't come back into the town, isn't it? Well, I think, if I got the story right, the when they built the Lambra Centre uh, later on, uh, they wanted it, but they said, quote, it's not in line with the current... Uh, you know, glass and tin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this building, Toby, what a magnificent Victorian, wonderful. It's a lot of stories. For instance, you didn't know, George Formby mm -hmm. first played his ukulele banjo there in 1923. First place he did it was Barnsley Lambert. Pulled the place in. He used to die of death. You would not die of death. Yeah. We all die of death until he started playing his banjo and, and he met his girlfriend there from Castleford, Beryl. And she hated the place, by the way. But that's yeah. <laughs> very wonderful memories, you know. Yeah. And, and we talk about you as a historian and a filmmaker now, and you, you yeah, yeah. making lots of local history. Oh, I know. I, 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 Toby, out there, you cannot believe thousands and thousands of views. And, I, I, you know, I find it incredible. You know, mm -hmm. it, it goes on, on on all these social media sites. One the other week, uh, 2,000 views in an hour. In an hour? Yeah, it's unbelievable, isn't it? You know, yeah, you're talking oh. about bringing Channel 4 to Sheffield. You're doing, <laughs> doing a job yourself. Uh, Eric Wilkinson, this is in his garden. This is, this is his garden gnome. How's he dealing with all this attention? Well, it, actually, it's being lost, Toby. Nobody knew where it was. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that's the problem. He, he got it in 1982. And as I said, we, we tracked him down. John, my mate, John, he's like a dog with a bone. He won't let things go, and he's tracked it through books. And Last Monday night, he phoned me. Banging it down with rain. Dave, I found it. I said, found what is this statue? So off we went to Wakefield. Pouring rain. I bet I thought we were mental. And this bloke told me it was like a castle. I says, I can't. I said, I, I says, well, either A, they'll set dogs onto us, or B, they'll let us in. Yeah. And they're wonderful people. They are two lovely people. He's a businessman. He sells tyres, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, and he, he, he's a multimillionaire, the lad, you know, but he's a lovely fella. Yeah. And he went in with it. As you say, he was driving through Barnsley in 1982, and he saw him. What's that thing? He says, can I have it? He says, ah. Because I asked him, how much you pay? He says, no, I got it for no. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, so yeah. what did you think when you first when you set eyes on Atlas after all? I was gobsmacked, Toby. Yeah. Absolutely. Because what his wife's done, the face, uh, she's embellished it. Uh, she's put some more uh, marbles in its eyes and it's all <laughs> painted. It looks more like that Game of Thrones figure on, on that tree, you know, that, yeah, that yeah. God thing. You know, it's, it's a lovely story, yeah. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I can't wait to see some pictures of it, which I'm sure, uh, I'm sure you've made the film. <laughs> uh, thanks ever so much indeed for coming in, Dave, and telling us all about it. Wonderful. Dave Cherry there.